with salt. <laughs> By God, we've done it. This is the Gulf. Congratulations, Mr. Burke. Congratulations yourself, Mr. Wills. No two explorers have embodied the Australian frontier spirit more than Burke and Wills. Their tragic attempt to cross the country in the early 1860s has been the subject of songs, books, myths and movies. I never should have trusted that swine. We can always try and catch them up, sir. Our camels are done to hell. We could never catch them up. God damn them all. On their delayed return journey, Burke and Wills and a man called King missed their rescue party by just eight hours and had to wait it out at remote Cooper's Creek. They never made it home. Many assume they died of thirst in the harsh Australian interior, but nothing could be further from the truth. Where they finished, one thing they had plenty of was water. And where there's water, there's generally food. And here's a feed of mussels like Burke and Wills would have had. But research now tells us that these little critters aren't enough on their own. And in fact, they played a big part in the death of Australia's most famous explorers. The rest of this story is one of discovery. But the pioneering explorers aren't early settlers, they're scientists. In times of drought, sheep graziers in outback Australia noticed a particular problem with their stock. They were dying, not of hunger and thirst, but of some painful affliction which caused their joints to stiffen. On certain farms, uh, farmers had lost up to 10% of their stock in a two-week period, and this was f through unknown causes. Dr Barry McCleary was sent to investigate and was shocked by the symptoms. They have conditions called stargazing. The animal basically walks around um, um, staring at the stars, basically. It separates from the flock. It obviously has a lot of um, um, behavioural problems. Um, eventually, it, it basically just falls down and dies. Feeding trials and Barry's work in the lab proved that the sheep were suffering from a lack of vitamin B1. In other words, they had a severe case of the disease beriberi. The cause was traced to this plant called Nardu. There are two varieties, both grow close to water, and stock will turn to Nardu for sustenance in times of drought. In um, the Nardu, it contains, it produces an enzyme called thiaminase, which breaks down vitamin B1. And the level of th this enzyme in Nardu fern is around about uh, 20 times higher than any other known source of the enzyme. Well, um, I've always been interested in um, Australian history and, you know, Australian, uh, Australiana in general. It was at a barbecue that Barry McCleary was talking to his friend and fellow scientist, John Earle, about his work with the Nardu plant. John has a very good background uh, knowledge of the history of Australian explorers, and all of a sudden uh, twigged. And I immediately thought, well, that's, that's the explanation for Burke and Wills, that uh, the Nardu has probably poisoned them the same as it uh, is poisoning the sheep and cattle and so on. It's often forgotten that Burke and Wills conducted a scientific expedition. They took an artist who made these records of the journey. They collected samples, including one of a Nardu front. And Wills kept extensive diary notes till his dying day. But starvation on Nardu is by no means very unpleasant. It came over clear from the Wills diary that they had suffered from beriberi. They had all the symptoms of um, muscle wasting, weakness in their legs especially, pains uh, in their legs, and uh, hypothermia. Once I became convinced that Bergen Wills had died of um, beriberi because of eating the nardu, 
um, the question was now why, why, how was it that the Aboriginal people could eat um, nadu and um, still survive, or why did they eat something that was so potentially toxic? Wells was convinced they could live on nadu bread because they'd seen Aborigines eat so much of it. What they didn't see was how those Aborigines soaked their potentially toxic nadu seed before making it into flour. I was able to work out that, that water was the, um, the key. Uh, the water would sort of inactivate the enzyme which break down uh, thiamine, and so water um, would be enough to prevent beriberi. Apart from drinking, the only use Burke and Wills found for water was as a source of edible mussels. Little did they know that their mussel entree was having the same effect as the nadu. The effect of eating the mussels was already starting them to make them um, develop beriberi. They basically got a double whammy because um, biologically there seems to be only three sources of uh, thiaminase enzyme, one being the ferns like nadu, brack and rock fern the second uh, freshwater mussels, and the third one is a particular type of bacteria. So they actually managed to eat two out of the three. Wills speculated that their sickness was related to diet, but they didn't have the luxury of modern medicine. Now, thanks to Dr Barry McCleary, there's a cure for man and beast alike. If it's noticed uh, in a, a flock of sheep, uh, at, you may lose one or two sheep, but by injecting with thiamine, you can save the rest of the flock. And that was the best um, solution to the problem. Burke and Wills aren't the only people who've died from misunderstanding the way Aboriginal people prepare plant foods. This is a zamia palm. Similar plants grow all around Australia. Each year they produce this really big fruit. Early settlers died from eating this fruit raw. They thought they could eat it because they saw the husks scattered around Aboriginal campfires. But before the Aborigines had eaten it, they'd leached it in running water or they'd buried it in the ground to destroy the toxins it contains. That's all for this week. But next week we'll go to South Australia and show you how a lot of nothing can be deadly. We'll meet a man who spent 14 days at sea floating in an old-fashioned fridge and we'll take a look at Australia's largest ever search and rescue mission. They're just plain gut survival. That's all lived for the day and when we stop walking we die sort of thing. That's out there next week. I'll see you then.